Hi guys, Jordan from BNP Campers. Just going to do your handover video on your Concorde Charisma. Um, so, if we start under the bonnet here, you see the bonnet opens up really nicely. Who that's from down there? Um, nice and easy to get to. Unlike a lot of the A-class uh, motorhomes, they've done a few bits to make things easier. So they've got this little point up here. So if you want to top up your um, washer fluid, you can do that from there. Uh, so you can see there, it goes straight into that bit there. Uh, your brake fluid goes in through this reservoir just there. That's sort of like an overflow for that. Uh, attached for your to your servo there at the back. Engine oil goes in through this cap just here at the top. And your engine oil dipstick is this red, red top one just there at the front. You've then also got your engine coolant which will be sitting in this reservoir just here at the front. And again, this is a uh, overflow for your radiator. So that's all there. Obviously it's had its full service uh, done by Mercedes. So you know, all of that sort of stuff should have been checked and done already anyway. So we shouldn't have to worry about any of that. Uh, otherwise, really a huge amount else. You know, you've got your engine battery just there at the back. Um, so if you needed to get to that for any reason, that's where that is. Um, ABS, pump, all that sort of stuff's down there. Uh, yeah, I've got a few bits that I believe down here are to do with the uh, buttons that I'll show you on the inside of the vehicle. Um, because the coolant on these Audi, uh, the Audi and the coolant on these Concords kind of like work as one sometimes. But I'll explain that to you um, in just a minute. So, um, but yeah, so other than that, I think that's about it really for under the bonnet. Um, the bonnet release is over on this near side, just down here in the bottom corner. storage just inside here in this front cupboard you got uh, drain so your there's a couple of drains on the vehicle so I'll show you, I'll go around and show you which one does which um, but you see the little, little cap off the drain just there um, we'll go through that in just a minute your diesel filling point is this black one here at the front then got um, something that I'll just explain to you quickly this little sort of like dial you, you got the black knob just there that you can turn 90 degrees basically what that does is that sort of isolates the um, coolant that runs through the engine as well as the Audi system so essentially when you start the engine up and drive it if you leave that on where it is now when you get to wherever you're going the van on the inside will be warm working through from the engine um, so you haven't got to use the Audi system at all. So if you were basically on holiday somewhere cold, you could leave that on. And then when you get to wherever you're driving to and stop the engine, the van will be nice and warm inside uh, because it's sort of using the heat from the engine to pump around the uh, the water to the wet central heater, which is quite cool. So I'll, uh, but there's another way of using that as well, which I'll show you in just a minute when we get inside. Hookup point, this one just here. So if you want to plug your hookup cable into the vehicle, to give you access to anything 240 volt and your, your battery charger and things like that that's where you go for that um, so that's your wastewater drain so that's the one that i showed you just down there so when you take that cap off and open up this uh here so at the moment it's in its open position if i close it lifting it all the way up that'll stop it from draining out any more uh, wastewater it's empty at the moment so we thought we'd empty out all your tanks and all, the, all that sort of stuff as well um, Next to that, you've got your fresh water inlet. So if you want to fill your fresh water tank up, that's where you go about that. Obviously, you've got your gas locker just here as well. Um, you've got two different sort of gas lockers, if you like. So you've got the main, uh, well, I don't know which one would, would originally come with the van, um, but you've got a gas locker for bottles in here, which you have had all of the regulator and all that sort of stuff refitted because it was all sort of not quite right in here so it's got all of this in here this is a um, automatic switch that you've got inside here which I'll show you in a minute and um, you've got one here in this locker here for the bottles and you've also got one down there for your um, tank as well so your underslung tank um, but basically there'll be a bottle in here when you pick the van up because we're going to fit one but we're going to fit a nice little six kilo propane bottle in here so you can either use it from uh, the bottles or from the underslung tank it's totally up to you so I'll close that back over for now and I'll just show you your, oh, your just do this one and hold on a second. Right, so under here, 
you've got your uh, underslung LPG tank. And like I said, um, that's been repainted uh, by uh, Magic Motor and Man. And uh, so that's all been redone. That probably needs to be redone in a couple of years or so. Um, but basically just keep your eye on it. Uh, it's all right as we speak at the moment. Uh, to get into here you basically just need to undo this little key here and there's just an on and off dial inside that um, so all the regulator inside there has also been replaced for a new one because it was all out of date but basically take this cover off um, which is really easy as soon as you undo that in there it just pops off and then you can turn it right the little dial that you'll see in there turn it right clockwise to turn it off or left anti-clockwise to turn it um, on basically so clockwise turns it off anti-clockwise turns it on um, so yeah, that's if you want to use your underslung tank. Obviously, like I said to you, you've got another one of those electronic switches inside which you can turn it on and off from, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. Next door to that, you've got this uh, filler point for your underslung tank. So if you want to fill up that tank there, you can fill it up just from this little point here. And that's at any petrol station that has LPG written on the, uh, on the uh, sort of diagram when you come in. Um, the heating and hot water in this vehicle is Aldi, um, but this is the cover here. So it's Truma, Aldi, same thing really. Um, so this is the vent for that. So if you have your heating on or anything like that, you'll be able to feel warm air coming out through the underneath of this just here. Obviously you've got, instead of having toilet cassette, you've got a, um, an actual onboard, onboard toilet cassette locker uh, or onboard toilet tank if you like be easier to describe it um so we've drained that out properly down the manhole obviously uh it was full up so we've obviously made sure that it's completely empty for you we don't want anything in there you know we we'll take it away um so there's a couple of drains just down here this by the way is the actual heating system itself um so you don't need to do anything with that you just leave this how exactly how it is um but if you see there you've got a few different drain taps the one at the very back, you don't actually have to worry about. You can leave that one shut. It's basically just like a little overflow for your fresh water, I believe. We didn't really get much out of it. Um, the only ones you need to worry about are these three at the front and the one with the yellow sticker on it. So the one with the yellow sticker on it is your actual toilet holding tank. So when you take the, uh, the cap off, uh, well, sorry, this blue one that runs all the way through to the back, when you pull that down, if you pulled that down, it would then basically drain out if you pulled the um, the one with the yellow sticker on it. Uh, so that's there. That's how you drain out your, your uh, toilet tank. You've then got the rest of these little smaller ones here. So these are for your pipes, basically. So you've got a fresh water drain here, a fresh water drain there, and a hot water drain there, basically. So if you wanted to empty out all of the water system, just basically turn all three of these, um, and then that'll just drain it all out. All right. Obviously at the back here, you've got your absolutely humongous garage, which I've got open on the other side as well. Just wanted to show you a couple of bits in here. You've got an external water point here, um, which, you know, as you can probably <laughs> imagine, it's just literally just hot and cold external water. So if you wanted to um, get hot and cold water outside, you can do that. Got a proper little shower point there. Um, there's a load of odds and sods in there. Um, you've got an extension pipe for the um, toilet waste tank, which you will need. We, we, we've just had to use and obviously we've cleaned that out, but you will need that. That's in this box just here. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, it's all stuff that you'll work out pretty quickly, but you know, I just wanted to show you everything uh, and sort of like show the, we've drained it all out, all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, so that's where all those extra parts are for the uh, draining out of the pipes and all that kind of thing, all in the rear locker. I noticed earlier on that your rear lights here, obviously they're great big things, uh, but you can actually undo these with a little flathead screwdriver. So you should be able to get to the bulbs nice and easily. If you ever needed to replace a bulb, it'd be nice and easy to get to just with these two screws, rather than having to take the entire thing out and all that. Uh, let's see, you can just get to it like that. Uh, your tow bar, Obviously all here with the correct uh, power cable there as well for the lights. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to say about that really. It's all, it's all there. We haven't had to do anything with it or anything. Um, and then again, obviously the same with these lights just here on the off side. Carpets for the vehicle are in the garage here. So if you wanted to use those, then you can do. Um, but we tend to take them up so that you can see, you know, the, the floors in good condition and things. Um, 
but yeah, that's all there if you should need it. Got the step out here, so if you ever needed to use that, then it's really, really helpful to have that pre-fitted. Um, they're not cheap to have these things fitted, uh, but yeah. Um, under here, if I just... Hold on a second. I should have done this first, really. Right, so you've got this little cover just here, which I've just pulled off from here nice and easily. Um, lots of electronical bits and pieces going on, but it's actually nice and simple. Um, you've got a solar regulator just here, which by the way, your solar panel on this is fantastic. Um, you know, we, we've had it all the lights on in the vehicle for an hour or so when, when we've been emptying out the tanks and getting it set up for the video. And uh, it's still sat at sort of 13 and a half volts, which is like a, is almost the level that you'd expect if you had a hookup plugged into the vehicle. So it's, you know, really, really, really good. Um, the rest of it, it's kind of all just kind of like sensors and things like that, fuses, relays, all that sort of stuff. The only things that you need to worry about really is you've got a fuse box up here. So if anything was to go wrong over the, you know, in the period of you owning it, obviously you can let us know and we'll help you out. But you have got a nice simple little fuse board up here, which have got a little sink, uh, a little symbol uh, next to all of the fuses. So you can have a little look in there and check for things if you want to. Um, and you've also got these here, which are your trip switches. So they've all got a little di a little uh, word above them telling you exactly which one does which. So again, same thing if you had any issues with anything at all. So if you plugged your cable into the van and it wasn't charging or you plugged it in and something wasn't working, just have a little look in here, make sure that you've, uh, you know, they're all in the upright position. And if I just show you, I literally just put that in the little slot at the bottom. Much easier with two hands, I'd expect. Push those bits in there and push the little cap down like that. And that's how that stays in. Lower down here, you've got your great big inverter. So there's a button on the inside of the vehicle, which I'll show you in just a minute how to make that work. But you've got the inverter there. So basically, if you um, didn't have a hookup cable in the vehicle and you wanted to use your main sockets in the vehicle, so your three pin sockets, you can use this for a little while. It's not a very good idea to use it for very long because obviously then your leisure battery will start to die. Um, but yeah, as much as you can, just uh, don't use it for as long as, uh, you know, very long. It's only if you're sort of quite desperately need to use the uh, 240 volt power and don't have a cable, but there you go. Uh, and behind there, you've got a couple of really hefty looking batteries. Um, and I don't know exactly what batteries they are, but they look like really hefty ones. Normally the, the big strong ones are the ones of the uh, the rope for the uh, handles. So you've got a couple of really, really good batteries back there. And yeah, so that's all of your sort of, your main stuff, all of your electrical bits and pieces are there, nicely stowed away. Um, inverter and all that kind of thing are all down here. But like I said to you, there is one button on the inside of the vehicle, which I'll show you how to use, um, which will allow you to use this without having to come into the garage. So we carry on, hope to make sure there's nothing behind. No, no. So all you've got really um, on the soft side is a external gas point down here. So if you wanted to use gas outside here, we usually, you know, it's the, the reason they have it on the off side here is so that you can be underneath the awning um, whilst using it. You've then got an isolator tap for that external point and kindly being left the bit that goes into that to actually use it as well. These two vents just here are for your fridge. So if you had the fridge lit up on gas, you'd be able to feel a little bit of warm air coming out through that top right hand side. Although it is a little bit more awkward to feel the heat on these bigger vents. Um, so, you know, you, might, you may or may not be able to feel that, but I'll show you how to, uh, how to work out whether it's definitely on or off. This cupboard just here is just for storage really. Um, it's not really much to show you to be honest. You've got the awning winder down here and the center support beam as well. Um, yeah, that's about that for that locker. And then you've got your locker at the front here, which is quite important really. Um, this is your sort of manual override for the raising floor in the cab. So if you uh, had any problems with this at any point and you desperately needed to get it down or up, um, then you can manually do it from here. We have had to do it before, it's a little bit awkward, um, which is why we've made sure that it's definitely working exactly how it should, so that you shouldn't ever have to do that. So, 
we jump in the van now. And by the way, I mean, you know, I've not got the heating on here, and I've got windows open here, there, and everywhere, and it is roasting hot inside here, so it's, <laughs> it's yeah, so well insulated. Um, in fact, I am going to open a window because it is very warm. Right, so first things first, I'll open up this covered up here so I don't forget to show you everything. But you've got your main control panel here, which is really, really nice and simple. You've got a main on switch and an off switch there. So when you turn the on switch on, basically that allows anything 12 volt in the vehicle. So lights, ignition, um, your 12 volt sockets, all that sort of stuff will be allowed to work. Once you've turned that on, you can then look over here and use all your other bits and pieces, basically. Um, you've got a few level indicators. So if I press this button here, it tells you, see, 13 and a half volts in your leisure battery. Press it again, 13.2 volts in your engine battery. And then it shows you how many amps are being drawn, basically. So 0.4 of an amp is pretty much nothing, to be fair. You then got water, so you've got 27% in your freshwater tank. And it tells you your waste level. So obviously we've emptied that out. So that's why it's empty. And then you've got external temperature, internal temperature. And you can see there, <laughs> that's why that's why it feels so warm in here because it's nearly 24 degrees. So um, all of that is correct, by the way. A lot of the time um, on the motorhomes, you'll find that the water levels and the temperature levels and things like that have gone a bit sort of skew with over the years, but this one's been obviously, you know, really, really, really well looked after. So it's all all working exactly as it should. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's much else to show you on the levels uh, part of it. You can program, usually, you know, I haven't been through there and checked all of that sort of stuff to see what it does. Um, but the programming one normally means you can sort of set up alarms for yourself and things like that. Um, so you can have a little look through there if you like. Um, it's a CBE unit, which is a really nice, um, really nice sort of company that makes pretty much all of the control panels really. Um, so yeah. Main lights on and off switch. So you see there, I just pressed this, I've turned it off now, but if I turn it on there, literally all of the lights around the vehicle then get their power um, in order to work. Water pump is the one underneath there. So once you've turned that on, you'll then be able to come around to any of your taps and pull the water through. Um, obviously you've got a cold side to the right and a hot side to the left. Um, it's really important that when you first come into the van, you just pull that hot water side there uh, and just make sure that you've got enough water in your boiler. Um, if no water comes through on the hot side, it will mean one of two things. It either means you've got no water in your boiler and it needs to be filled up a little bit, or it means that you've got no water in your tank. Um, so you need to make sure that you do that first. Once you've done that, you can then just sort of carry on using the vehicle as and when, you know, as you want to. Um, you've got a couple of other ones here. So you've got your sort of water. So this is your sort of like heating button here. Um, that doesn't actually make the heating work. It just sort of, I think it sort of pumps the water around. Um, and then you've also got that one there. I'm not sure whether or not it actually has them or not, uh, but it's usually like a little vent for inside the gas locker, I believe. So you can use that if you want to. Um, so I'll leave that one on just for a minute. Uh, so the bits above here are the bits I wanted to show you. So you've got this little button down here, which says Mobitronic. Mobitronic is the brand of your um, inverter. So again, I, I, just, I just want to explain it to you because I don't know if you've used an inverter before or not. So I will just tell you um, an inverter basically converts 12 volt power from your leisure batteries down there, like I showed you. It converts that power into mains power, so 240 volt power. Um, so any plug socket around the van, like this one, that you plug a you know a household plug into, they will work. Those three pin sockets will work if you have a hookup plugged into the vehicle, or if you don't have access to a hookup cable, you can press this button here. It will turn the inverter on, and then it will start powering up these three pin sockets via the 12 volt batteries. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and like I said to you, the reason it's so important not to leave that on and use it for ages and ages is because if you put that, if you imagine you're converting 12 volts into 240 volts, um, and so obviously that's gonna put a real big strain on your battery as it is. 
Um, but the longer you use that for, the quicker your batteries are just going to keep draining and draining. Um, and thankfully, you've got some really, really good batteries back there. So if you drain them out a little bit, they will sort of come back to life a little bit. Um, but it's really not a good idea to do that too often. So as much as you can, just use a hookup cable instead of using that inverter. It's only for if you're really, really desperate for a bit of 240 volt power, then you can use that if you need to. Uh, your onboard Wi-Fi, which has been fitted, um, will work only if you've got your main lights isolator switch on. Okay, so as long as this light is on here, your Wi-Fi box here will work. You've got a couple of remotes around the vehicle. So you've got this one here, which is for your free sat box. So that's this one here. Um, I wanted to, I've turned all of this off so I can show you it all working and show you exactly how to use it as well. So this is your television system. I don't know if you're going to be using it or not, but I will run you through it anyway. So you've got an aerial point down here, which the TV is already plugged into. Or in fact, the, the, the little sat box is already plugged into. Um, and so all you have to do is plug this in here, and make sure the little red light's on, and then you can turn your telly on. When you first turn that TV on, nothing will happen, okay? Absolutely nothing's gonna happen because the screen will come on, but you won't get any signal because I've not done anything else up here yet. So it'll come on, it'll say that the receiver is not receiving a signal or the signal's too weak, all right? So that's, that's fine. Once you've done that, I'm gonna come over to here I have been told um, by the guy who did your habitation check, just so that you know, this box here is over 10 years old, all right? It works absolutely brilliantly, but what it does, you've got, there's a couple of um, sort of ways of doing it, but this is all, well, let me explain it better. It tells you that it's trying to get onto Astra 1, but actually what it's doing is it's going to Astra 2, which are these satellites up in the sky, in, the, uh, in space. So what happens is when you turn this on, It'll do its thing for a little while, and then automatically, this little box here will send it to the correct one, and it'll just do its thing. So all, literally, all you have to do, turn your telly on, and then press on, on here, okay? The oyster dish, I don't know if you better see it or not, up there, there you go, it's just raising up, and then it'll spin round, and it will lock on after a few seconds or so. And once it's done that, you'll watch that, you know, you'll see that the telly starts working. So we'll just wait and see. Oyster vision open, and it will then try to search for Astra 1, but actually this little box here is telling it exactly what to do. All right, so again, like I said, you don't have to press any buttons on it apart from on and off. And once it's found it, let's wait and see. It will find it and it will lock on. Sometimes you can take about sort of 30, 40 seconds or so to actually find the right place. Um, but once they've done it, they just sort of, you know, that's it, they work. So it's just making a few final adjustments now. It's just... There we go, the screen's off on the telly, but you can hear now. actually working on there so you should be able to go through and change the channels on I think it's this one so yeah but there you go so I just wanted to show you how that worked so I wanted to make it really really clear to you that you don't if you start like sort of messing about with the buttons on here and all that sort of stuff you're gonna run into some serious trouble <laughs> so just, if I was you, just literally use that on and off button there and sort of, you know, that's it. Tells you there that it's locked onto the right one. Um, and that's it, that's all you have to do. If you want to put it away, press the off button. You see the telly just goes off straight away because there's no more signal. Um, and then after that, you can turn this little free sat box off and unplug your TV. Pop your remotes away back up here. And that's it, completely done, all put away. And then all the television system is completely out of the way. All right, so that's how that works. Um, there's a couple of bits to show you down here. So you've got the step switch just here. Um, the limiter switch on the step needed to be replaced because uh, it wasn't going up very well. So that's all been done. 
that's another common thing that needs to be done quite often so that's all been well not often sorry but needs to be done once in a while so that has already been done uh, a couple of light switches here which again you'll you know you'll work out what they are i think that should be an awning light there um, yeah there's, there's all sorts of lights dotted about um but yeah step uh some sort of down light somewhere probably and an awning light just there um let's just have a look in all these overhead cupboards make sure there's nothing else i've missed up here no. so let me just quickly show you as well here um pretty much all of the windows around the vehicle are exactly the same um sort of design and how they work so you've got a fly screen that comes down from the top you literally just pull that down and it will lock in at the bottom to get it to open lift up on this little bit here and it'll just go all the way back up to the top and you've got a main blackout blind which also locks in at the top push up and then pull it down this particular window opens up by sliding like that and you can lock it over like that um in the cab and sorry i'm doing this in a bit of a funny sort of way but i'll just show you i want to show you a few bits in the cab there's a couple of bits that i've personally never seen before in any other vehicles um which i just want to get out of the way to show you now um obviously being a i think it's a 616 chassis uh mercedes-based vehicle um i've driven this one myself up to the show which i know that's where you first saw the vehicle um the radio system all works fantastic all the speakers work really really well i uh, just thought i'd point that out Cruise control is all up here on this stalk. Lights and indicators are on this left-hand one. Wash and the wipers on the right. Uh, you can adjust your, your mirrors by using this little joysticky thing down here. Uh, down here, you've got a couple of switches. Um, you've got light switches here. So this one does the one above your head. And there's another switch over there, which does the one above your head there as well. Um, you can move the blind down here so you've got a main um wind, windscreen blind in there Oops, sorry one second just pop the ignition on so uh, perhaps when the engine's running or something oh no so that button at the bottom there turn the button on there till you get a little green light on and then you'll be able to use your blind so the blind comes up so you can just basically, even when you're driving along, you can pull that down um, so that you can use it as like a little like sort of, I don't know, like a, a bit up there for the top. Um, you can bring the blind down or up as, you know, as and when you need to. Um, that's that. You've also got down here your automatics. Obviously, it's an automatic vehicle.